first of all, for me, and I've done so many interviews that I can't quite remember with so many people that I cannot remember, but a lot of great people. But tonight, this is one of the highlights of my entire career as a sportscaster, to have these two guys sitting here, and I, I know them already, but it's just a chance for us to sit down and look back a little bit. And it's a celebratory sort of meeting because they have been named two of the greatest players that ever played this game which I could have told you that a long time ago. I didn't have to wait this long for it. And now we're just gonna sit around and kick it around a little bit because we're all back together for a minute. Thank you guys for coming. So the first thing that I, that I think about came to my mind is when you got traded, because you were such a star, you were such a star, but I think most of the people were thinking, well, how are they gonna play together? How did that work? Because it worked pretty well. Are you asking me? Either one of y'all. <laughs> Either one of y'all. The, the, the main thing is the fact that uh, we came and we really had mutual respect for each other. I mean, obviously, when I came here, I, I, I wasn't really the player that I was before. You know, it took me a while to get back into really playing the game, you know, the way that I felt as though I should have been playing. It was just great to be here. You know, Clyde, you know, gives you a, a, a different sense of, of, of looking at the game. You know, when I'm doing something on one side and I, could, and I know what he could do on the other side, it made me feel, you know, that much better. Well, I can recall like yesterday, the trade. We thought we needed a big guy, so we thought we were looking for a center. And then when they traded for Earl, I was like, wow, Earl. First thing I thought was, well, I don't have to guard him anymore. <laughs> and the papers were, we need two basketballs. They're going to do this. They're, they're going to trade Frazier. They can't play together. But as Earl alluded to, the mutual respect. My friends, man, when I used to guard Earl, my friends say, what do you say to him, man? I said, I don't say nothing, man. They go, come on, man, you all over this guy like that? I said, man, sometimes Earl say, Clyde, good defense. Sometimes I say, Earl, great shot. So that was our only banter on the court. Right. Other than that, it was just his respect. And, and I could tell when I talked to Earl, he, he relished that opportunity just like I did. When he came to the Knicks, a lot of people thought the only way he and Frazier could play in the same backcourt would be with two basketballs, but to their credit, and the Red Hopes, man, they formed one of the best backcourt alliances in the league. He came in the locker room. I didn't know whether to hug him or mug him. <laughs> <laughs> man, we had so many guys. <laughs> what did I do with him, you know? But right away, man, everybody gravitated to him. They the Bush here. Everybody went over welcome Earl, man. It was it was just uncanny how how we accepted him into the fold, man. It was beautiful to watch you guys play during that time. And you both had the alter egos, which was which were, I don't think they had any that. You are Clyde, you are the Pearl. Fire and ice. Right. Yes. That's what they alluded to as the Rolls Royce backcourt. Yeah, that fit. <laughs> right, yeah, that was for the Afro Pole. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First of all, let me just say this before I say it. As an athlete, I would have loved to play in New York because I'm fired up naturally just going to work every day. If you play here at Madison Square Garden, which is the mecca of basketball all the world, how do you not fire it up when you come to go to work every day? And just tell me what it was like being a Nick. When we were playing, New York was the place. Chicago, LA, because of what we were talking about now, what you were talking about my broadcasting. Mm -hmm. You know, that's part of being in New York City, that I'm still able to do that, and we're still talking after 50 years. Right, <laughs> right, what, right. What has happened here. It's all a New York thing. You know, coming here to New York was, shucks, it was, the right place to be, it seems like, you know, uh, especially with my game. Yes. And and certainly, you know, the things that happened, you know, while we were here, because if I thought about legacy, obviously I wouldn't have come to New York. But I came to New York because it was the best place to be. They traveled better <laughs> than, than the rest of us. You know, they seemed to have eaten better than the rest of us. And, uh, you know, it was the place to be, so. Uh, I, I think the other thing, Amar, was, he had all the individual accolades. Yes. But he didn't have that. Right. Two, one, we have a new NBA champion. <laughs> right. He didn't have that baby, you know. He had everything else, and that's what he saw, man. He's a prudent guy. He's good. hey, man, this is my opportunity. When you're winning in New York, man, it's like, it's not like any place else in the world. Yeah, I remember the rookies had to take the film, the projector, 
everything and take some of the bags through the airport, all that kind of stuff. I'm back sure they, in the plane. Yeah, 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 back in the plane. Back you couldn't sit in the other way. I'm sure they don't do that anymore. Well, no, pl no, plus you had, you had an instance of roommates. Oh, yeah. You had guys who were maybe played your position and you roomed with him and you talked the game. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, and that's how you really learn the game. Right. You know, and what you should do, what you shouldn't do, how you, how to be a professional, how not to be a professional. Right. And such, you know, but those are the things that uh, I remember back. And those are the great things. Your roommate that, was your lifeline. Yeah. You went to dinner with him. You went to the movies. You right. Know, everything was with your roommates. You know, like people ask you, how did you get your number? I said, I was sitting at a train and go, hey, Frazier. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I became number two. <laughs> in Baltimore, you we used to stay at the Holiday Inn and walk to the arena. So I come out, there like five or six kids, Clyde, let me carry your bag, you know. Get over there telling me how great I am. Then they go, Pearl gonna get 50 on you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> See, so when they come to New York, it's the same thing. When they get yeah. out of the hotel, our fans are badgering them. So they're psyched up, man, when you get to the game. Man, I'm so happy you guys came over. I know you guys are both busy. You got time, but I'm happy you came over and just have this conversation. I'm sure the, the Nick fans that get a chance to see this, this is uh, sort of the inside of what it all is. So enjoy it.